Greetings students and welcome back to another video on nonlinear dynamics. In this lesson we're going to continue our discussions about bifurcations by talking about transcritical bifurcations. Suppose we have a dynamical system of the form dx by dt equals mu x minus x squared. Now in this case there's three possibilities that we can have with the parameter mu. Mu can be positive, mu can be zero, and mu can be negative. What does the system look like if mu is positive? Well, when we try to solve for the fixed points by setting dx by dt equals zero, then we'll find that there's two solutions, x equals zero and x equals mu. By the way, I've denoted the fixed points of this dynamical system by xf. And since there's two solutions, this means there are two fixed points in the dynamical system when mu is positive. You can also verify this if you draw the phase portrait, that is if you plot dx by dt as a function of x, you'll find that the phase portrait of the system crosses the x-axis at two points, x equals zero and x equals mu, which confirms what we found in our calculation. Now when mu is positive you can see from the phase portrait that the fixed point at zero is unstable, since the flows are diverging from it. On the other hand the fixed point at mu is stable, since the flows are converging towards it. But what if mu is zero? Well, in that case, you only have one fixed point, which is at x equals zero. If you were to draw the phase portrait, you would find that the fixed point at x equals zero is half stable. If you start from a negative x, the system will diverge from zero, but if you start at a positive x, the system will converge to zero. Let's look at what happens if mu is negative. If mu is negative, then solving for the fixed points would again give me two solutions at zero and mu. However, if I were to evaluate the stability of those solutions by plotting the phase portrait, I would find that the fixed point at mu is now unstable, while the fixed point at zero is now stable. So in this situation, there's clearly something going on as we go from a positive mu to a zero mu to a negative mu. To get a better understanding of what's happening, we'll draw a bifurcation diagram. Recall from the previous video on saddle node bifurcations that a bifurcation diagram is a plot of the fixed point xf and the bifurcation parameter mu, the parameter that's being varied here to create the bifurcation. We're going to start creating our bifurcation diagram for negative mu. For the differential equation we just discussed, we know that there were two fixed points. One of them, xf1, was always zero and not dependent on mu, while the other, xf2, was equal to mu for negative mu. Now the fixed point at zero was found to be stable for negative mu, so I'll just draw xf equals zero on the left half of the bifurcation diagram using a solid line to denote stability. Meanwhile, the fixed point at mu was found to be unstable for negative mu, so I'll draw xf2 equals mu with a dashed line on the left half of the bifurcation diagram. What about when mu was zero? Well, at mu equals zero, we found that we had only one fixed point, xf equals zero, and that fixed point was found to be half stable. So I'll circle the fixed point xf zero at mu equals zero on this bifurcation diagram, and then I'll shade half of this circle to denote the fact that this is a half stable fixed point. And finally, what about when mu was positive? Well, in that situation, there were two fixed points. One of them, xf one, was always zero no matter what the value of mu was, while the other xf2 was always equal to mu for positive mu. For positive mu, however, the stabilities of the two fixed points were now switched from the stabilities at negative mu. The fixed point at zero was now unstable while the fixed point at mu was now stable. So we can see from our bifurcation diagram that as we go from a negative mu to zero to a positive mu, our two unstable and stable fixed points merge into a half stable fixed point at mu equals zero and then split apart with the opposite stability from what they previously had. In other words, as we go from negative mu to positive mu, there is an exchange of stability between the two fixed points. The zero fixed point gives up its stability to the mu fixed point, and in exchange it acquires the instability of the mu fixed point. This exchange of stabilities is what defines a transcritical bifurcation. A transcritical bifurcation is a bifurcation in which there is an exchange of stability between the fixed points as they cross the bifurcation point. There aren't any fixed points that are created or destroyed, the fixed points just change their stabilities as we cross the bifurcation point, which in this case is at mu equals zero and xf equals zero. Now the dynamical system given by dx by dt equals mu x minus x squared 
isn't the only one that has a transcritical bifurcation. It's just the most basic one that has a transcritical bifurcation. In fact, it's the normal form of the transcritical bifurcation. And we've discussed normal forms in the previous video, but just to recap, what I mean by normal form is that a dynamical system or differential equation that has a transcritical bifurcation will look like dx by dt equals mu x minus x squared near the area of the transcritical bifurcation. Let's illustrate this idea of transcritical bifurcation and normal forms with an example. Consider a differential equation given by dx by dt equals mu ln x plus x minus one. If you solve dx by dt equals zero, you'll find that one of the fixed points is at xf equals one. Our goal is to analyze the stability of xf equals one for different values of mu. And we'll begin this analysis by performing a linear stability analysis. I've already made a video on linear stability analysis in my nonlinear dynamics playlist, so you can check that out if you need a refresher. We're going to let f of x equal the right-hand side of our differential equation. Then if we take the derivative of f of x and substitute xf equals 1, that will tell us the stability of the fixed point at xf equals 1. When we perform the substitution, we'll find that the stability of the fixed point at 1 depends on mu plus 1, such that when mu is less than negative 1, the fixed point is stable, and when mu is greater than negative 1, the fixed point at xf equals 1 is unstable. So there's a change in stability of the fixed point xf equals 1 as we cross mu equals negative 1. This could be a transcritical bifurcation, but to make sure, we'll perform a variable substitution. We'll let mu tilde equal mu plus 1, and we'll let x tilde equal 1 half of mu times x minus 1. In that case, mu would be equal to mu tilde minus 1, and x would be equal to 2x tilde over mu plus 1. In addition, dx by dt would be 2 over mu times dx tilde by dt. Let's now plug dx by dt into our equation for dx tilde by dt. If we do that, we'll find that dx tilde by dt is mu over 2 times mu ln x plus x minus 1. If we now plug in our x and mu in terms of x tilde and mu tilde, and then if we perform some simplifying algebra, here's what we'll end up with. Now what we'll do is we'll perform a Taylor expansion of the natural log term around x tilde equals zero. And this is equivalent to performing a Taylor expansion around x equals one. Because if you'll go up, you'll see that the fixed point xf equals one corresponds to x tilde equals zero. So performing a Taylor expansion around x tilde equals zero will help us analyze the behavior of this dynamical system around the bifurcation point at x equals one. Because x equals one and x tilde equals zero are equivalent. And when we perform this Taylor expansion, we'll get 2x tilde over mu tilde minus 1 minus 2x tilde over mu tilde minus 1 squared over 2 plus some terms of the order of x tilde to the power of 3. Now keep in mind that our goal here is to examine the behavior of this dynamical system close to the bifurcation point, which you'll recall is at mu equals negative 1 and at xf equals 1. In terms of the new variables, that directly translates to mu tilde equals zero and x tilde equals zero. And since x tilde is close to zero in the neighborhood of the bifurcation point, we can ignore the terms with a power higher than two, since taking a higher power of a small number will result in an even smaller number. So if we simplify the differential equation now, we'll get dx tilde by dt is approximately equal to mu tilde times x tilde minus x tilde squared. By the way, the approximately equal to is there because we've canceled the higher order terms. And you can see that this equation is exactly the same as the normal form of the transcritical bifurcation that we wrote up above. Therefore, the fixed point xf equals one undergoes a transcritical bifurcation at mu equals negative one in this dynamical system. And in general, if you take a complicated system with a transcritical bifurcation and examine its behavior around the bifurcation point by making the proper change of variables, for instance, you'll find that the equation representing that system reduces to this normal form, dx by dt equals mu x minus x squared. Anyway, that should do it for this video. For the next lesson, I want you all to get your pitchforks ready because we're gonna talk about pitchfork bifurcations. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.